Hi, this is Dr. Fox. Let's talk about the pharyngeal neural plexus. In this video, we'll discuss the pharyngeal neural plexus and the various contributions of cranial nerves 9, 10, and the cervical sympathetic trunks to that plexus. The pharyngeal neural plexus has three major inputs. The glossopharyngeal nerve, cranial nerve 9, the vagus nerves, cranial nerve 10, in the superior cervical ganglia of the sympathetic trunks. When considering each of these inputs, we should consider their neuromodalities. So for instance, the glossopharyngeal nerves are carrying back somatic sensory or afferent information from the pharyngeal neural plexus back to the CNS. So cranial nerve nine is the afferent from the pharynx, the muscles, and mucosa. The vagus nerves, or cranial nerves 10, have a dual role within the pharyngeal neural plexus. First of all, the vagus nerves are conducting somatic motor impulses, or efferent stimulation, to the pharyngeal neural plexus. So, the vagus nerves, as you may recall, have a significant autonomic, specifically parasympathetic role in the body. And for the pharyngeal neural plexus, this is no exception. So the vagus nerves also are going to contribute visceral motor fibers to the plexus. To balance out the visceral motor fibers of the vagus nerves, there are going to be fibers to the pharyngeal neural plexus from the superior cervical ganglia of the sympathetic trunk. And these are predominantly vasomotor fibers to the vasculature, as well as the mucosa that lines the pharynx. So now that we have reviewed the inputs of the plexus, let's take a look at some of the targets and how they're affected. So the pharyngeal plexus is going to innervate more than just the pharynx, and we'll, we'll see how that's accomplished. But we should think about the relationships of the pharynx to other spaces. Now, certainly the pharyngeal neural plexus is going to innervate most of the muscles of the pharynx as well as the mucosa. And the, uh, the largest exception here is going to be in the innervation of the stylopharyngeus muscle. That stylos, stylopharyngeus muscle is efferently innervated by cranial nerve number nine. So that's a major exception to uh, pharyngeal innervation. The glossopharyngeal nerve, cranial nerve nine, has a very classic anatomical relationship with the stylopharyngeus muscle. So it's going to exit the jugular foramen, and it comes down and has a very close relationship with stylopharyngeus before it dives between the superior and middle pharyngeal constrictor muscles. Another major exception is that the, uh, the nasopharynx uh, mucosa is not innervated by the pharyngeal plexus. The nasopharynx is in fact innervated by a pharyngeal nerve, which is a branch of V2, which is the maxillary division of the trigeminal nerve. The pharyngeal neural plexus is going to innervate not just the muscles of the pharynx, not just the mucosa of the pharynx, but also most of the muscles and mucosae of the soft palate as well. So recall that the soft palate is the boundary between naso and oropharynx, and there is continuity between the pharynx and the nasal and the oral cavities. And so it's not surprising that there is some overlap of neuromodality between the pharyngeal plexus and various inputs between the nasopharynx uh, and nasal cavity, as well as the oropharynx and oral cavity. It's this pharyngeal neural plexus which is responsible for modulating the pharyngeal reflex, also known as the gag reflex. 
So when the, uh, the pharynx is stimulated by a, uh, a foreign stimulus into the, uh, into the throat, um, the glossopharyngeal nerve, which is the major afferent to the plexus, is going to conduct stimulus back to the central nervous system, which causes the vagus nerves to send out inputs back to the muscles of the pharynx, which causes an individual to look gag. So about one third of the population has this gag reflex. One third of the population does not have this gag reflex. And about one third of the population has a hyper gag reflex. So that's uh, something to consider when uh, performing uh, an examination of the, uh, the oral cavity. So be careful so as not to uh, trigger that gag reflex in two-thirds of the population, which may, and certainly one-third of the population, which may be hyperstimulated. So we've discussed the pharyngeal neural plexus, its various inputs and targets. This is your summary slide. Thank you very much.